It is my privilege to present the following program that was inspired by the way American businesses and organizations have responded to the events of September 11th. It's part of a special series produced by Heartbeat of America called Keeping America Strong. Each program spotlights a business or organization that is helping to do exactly that, keep America strong. Having served in the United States Navy for many years, I fully appreciate the important role small and middle-sized businesses play in the very fabric of our country. And I salute the professionals who lead these companies and thus keep America strong. They are the very backbone of our free enterprise system. And today on this program, you will meet the individuals behind one such organization. I'll be back later in the program to introduce the Keeping America Strong Award. And now, Let's learn more about the organization we are honoring today. Today, the eyes and ears of the 21st century are focused on new developments, new technologies, new emerging companies. We're on the scene to bring it to you as it happens. We anchor from our new studios in Los Angeles and then go out all over America to get to the heart of the story. I'm Bert Tenzer. I'm Bella Shaw. I'm Doug Llewellyn. And I'm William Shatner, and this is Heartbeat of America. Since 2001, our television series has been featuring entrepreneurial companies that move our country and our economy forward. Standing by at our studios in Los Angeles is one such company. Welcome. Good to have you with us. All right, let's begin by telling me what you do and who benefits from it. Well, I'm Dr. Mark Malone. I'm a pain management doctor. I treat uh, thousands of pain patients in severe chronic pain. As you know, one in three Americans will at some point in their life develop severe chronic pain. It's my job to diagnose and treat that pain so they can get on with their lives. Well, you're obviously successful. So what do you attribute your success to? Any particular philosophies or strategies? Our philosophy is diligence and hard work in finding the exact cause of a given patient's pain. It usually involves some type of damaged nerve or inflamed joints. We use the latest technology to find and treat the exact cause. Now, stay with us. There's more to come. Thank you, William. Now, I'm Doug Llewellyn here in our studios in Los Angeles with our guest. You've already seen him. I want to formally introduce him to you now. He's a medical director of a clinic known as Advanced Pain Care, which is headquartered in Austin, Texas. His name is Dr. Mark Malone. He is a specialist, a board-certified specialist in both pain management and in anesthesiology, and he has treated literally thousands of patients in acute and chronic pain. We're going to talk about the subject of pain management. Doctor, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Welcome. Thank you. Let me start off by asking you, someone who treats pain and sees patients in pain on a daily basis, what is the most common source of pain that people come in complaining about? Well, it's, uh, most commonly we see low back pain. Low That's back. That's the most common form of pain that we see. It turns out about two-thirds of our patients have some form of spine pain, either back or neck. Yep. And the rest of them have some type of regional pain or headaches. Correct me if I'm wrong, but sometimes it is really difficult to diagnose and ascertain exactly where the source of someone's pain is coming from, isn't it? That's very true. It's extremely difficult. Sometimes we never find out exactly where it's coming from. But it's our job to try to find out where it is most likely coming from and what is the most appropriate line of treatment for it. And the other key thing is pain can often be so debilitating that it really does ruin someone's life. It cripples them. That's true. Like I mentioned earlier, about one in three Americans suffers from chronic debilitating pain and it can ruin your life. It can prevent you from working. It can ruin your marriage. It can uh, cause uh, loss of income and uh, extreme suffering. So it's a major problem. It is a very major problem. And another thing worth bringing out is that the specialty that you're involved in right now is a relatively new specialty in the field of medicine. That's true. Uh, interventional pain management has um, grown over the last 20 or so years. It's relatively new. It is um, coming into its own because of new technology that's been developed uh, including the ability to, to uh, diagnose the exact cause of pain, 
the ability to locate specific nerves and inject uh, compounds where they'll do the most good. Let me jump ahead and ask you, the bottom line question is, in general, how effective can you be in helping remove or eradicate a source of pain? We can at times be 100% effective, and at times we can be 80% or, or even 50%. But any improvement in this type of pain syndrome is very welcome to these pain patients. All right, let's get into the details. What happens when a patient comes into you complain? Obviously, they tell you I have low back pain or shoulder pain. What do you do? How do you how do you begin to ascertain and diagnose where where the pain is, and then what happens? Well, the first thing we do is get a complete history from the patient. How long has he had the pain? Where does it hurt? What are the causative factors? Uh, how, uh, what is the time frame? Does it, is it happening all day? Does he have pain at night or just when he has activities? Um, and then we do a complete physical examination on the patient. And this will give us a lot of information about exactly where it is and where it's coming from. Then finally, we'll gather old records, medical records, and get MRI studies or CT studies to see if we can determine the exact cause of the pain. Is it, especially low back pain, is it always in some way associated with the spinal column? Low back pain usually is associated with the sp spinal column. The, right. the type of chronic, severe, debilitating pain that we're talking about um, typically has lasted at least several months and usually several years. This is usually associated with some type of uh, nerve damage, pinched nerve, or damaged joints in the back. Well, when you discover things like that, what are the most common ways of treating that kind of pain to try and relieve it? What do you do? Well, depending on the, the specific cause of the pain, if it's a pinched nerve that's often associated with a herniated disc, we can go in and under fluoroscopic or x-ray guidance, we can inject some steroid and local anesthetic next to the pinched nerve that usually relieves the uh, constriction on that nerve and improves the patient's pain and well-being. Most of what you do is not surgical. In other words, does not require operating on the on the. That's patient, right. Correct? That's right. That's one of our goals is to avoid surgery as much as possible. Right. Yeah. But you also have a lot of tools that you use, other than drugs and things like that. I mean, you've got sitting on the table here. Why don't you hand those to me? Let me hold these up, and uh, we can describe what these are. I mean, for example, you, you use pain pumps. We'll get a shot of this. These, uh, this is a morphine pain pump. That's right. This is That's installed right. in a patient's body. Right. This is normally a... normally in the uh, in their side somewhere in this. Well, here uh, yeah. we're look, we're getting a good look at this. It's kind of interesting to see this for the first time and think this could be installed in someone's body, but it can. And in addition to the the morphine pump, there's also this. Now, what is this? This is a neurostimulator, and and what you're holding there is the pulse generator or the battery component of the neurostimulator. That is attached to a wire that is in, inserted in the patient's spine that blocks, uh, the wire transmits electricity that blocks pain signals coming from the painful part of the body. It blocks pain signals. How does it do that? Well, it's tuned to the exact electrical frequency that interferes with the electrical impulses in the nerves that are transmitting the pain information. I mean, people don't think of electricity being generated through their body, but it, it is. That's true. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, there's electrical uh, impulses in the nerves. Uh, how do you determine which one of these devices might be appropriate? What's the, what's well, the story? Well, it depends on, on the, uh, the specific situation. Often in uh, a cancer pain or some pain that's, that's going to progress. And not going to go away. And it's not going to go away, right. or, or that may involve multiple parts or large areas of the body. Mm -hmm. We may tend more to use the morphine pump because this, this pump can be turned up as high as we need, it can be adjusted to the patient's needs, and um, it can overcome almost any kind of pain. Now the stimulator is more designed and developed to treat specific nerve damage. We see that a lot in, in uh, failed back surgery or, or damaged nerves in the extremities. When someone is using the morphine pump, I'm just thinking, how, <clears throat> how does it affect them? Can they go on and carry on a normal life? They can. They I mean, often does can. Does it make them disoriented or sleepy or anything like that? Any kind no. of problems from no, that? No. The, the beauty of the morphine pump is it uses minute quantities of morphine or other strong medication right. that's targeted right in the spinal canal, right in on the spinal nerves and in the spinal cord. Mm -hmm. This... Um, this minute amount of medication does not cause the usual side effects that you see with oral administration of strong medication.
So that, and when you say it's adjustable, you can do that. The doctor does that, right? right? We can turn it up or down depending on the needs. And you can do that even after you've operated, uh, not operated, but you've opened the body to insert the pump. That's right. That's right. We use telemetry to um, to change the program right. on the pump. It's such a very interesting field, and there's so many sources of pain. I have a whole list of these. Let's just talk about some of these and get you to tell me a little bit about them. I'll, I'll, back pain, really a big problem. Let me uh, mention arthritis. A lot of people. Yeah obviously complain about arthritis pain, right? Yeah, arthritis is a, a major cause and contributor to back pain. Arthritis and degeneration of the spine associated with arthritis often causes painful joints and pinched nerves. And what, well. what can you do? There has been no cure discovered for arthritis yet, has there? No, but you can control it, just like other diseases, say diabetes or hypertension. These right. diseases cannot be cured, but they can be managed and controlled for a lifetime. The same is true with arthritis and other forms of pain. Now, when we're talking about, for example, the, the, the pain pump, morphine pump, and the, the stimulator, this is for more serious sources of pain. Arthritis, you wouldn't, you wouldn't use one of these for something like that, would you? Or, not or not would you? for simple arthritis, but now advanced arthritis can cause all of the uh, pain in the world. You know, if, you're, if your spine is degenerating and your nerves are being pinched, and yep. your joints are crumbling, you're going to have a tremendous amount of pain, and you might be a candidate for either one of those two implants. All right, the other list, this is a long list of sources of pain that you have here. Uh, headache, I mean, that sounds pretty simple, but you doctors come, you come to see, people come to see doctors for, well, of course, migraine headaches. That's, yeah. I guess that would be where yeah. you'd really want to see someone like you. What do you do for that? Well, migraines are extremely common in the population. Approximately 25% of all women suffer from migraine headaches. Right. And there are various ways to treat them. Many of them respond to simple medication, and, uh, but some of them don't. Some of them have components of pain that are caused by actual pinched nerves in the neck. And uh, these can be treated with some of the other uh, techniques and procedures that we use at Advanced Pain Care. And again, you can determine that from the use of uh, x-rays? Or X-rays, MRIs, MRIs, CT scans. Nerve problems show up on a on an MRI. Well, you can yes, often they do. Really? You can yes, you can determine if a nerve is being pinched or or inflamed. Hip pain, another big area, I would think. Yes. How do you treat that? Well, hip pain is uh, is a major cause of debility in the United States. Uh, often it's associated with with severe advanced arthritis in in the hip joint. Yeah. Um, Sometimes people will respond to medication. Sometimes they'll respond to steroid injections to the hip joint. Right. Sometimes a combination of, of those plus physical therapy. If, if those fail, they may be candidates for a total joint replacement, in which case we refer to an orthopedic specialist. And then there's a list here, musculoskeletal. Did I pronounce that right? Right. Musculoskeletal. Musculoskeletal pain. Which is what? What really is uh, that? Myalgias or fibromyalgia. Okay. Uh, chronic aches of a regional body part or sometimes the entire body. Um, this, this is a growing concern in the United States. Uh, approximately 3% uh, of the population suffers from, from this chronically. Uh, it can be treated with medications um, and physical therapy, psychological therapy, sometimes some nerve blocks as well. As I mentioned at the outset, you are board certified in pain management. Uh, why, is, why is that so important? And why is it important for a, a patient to know that their doctor is board certified? Well, this ensures that we um, are well trained in the, in the techniques and procedures of blocking the nerves without damaging nerves, blocking the right nerves, and uh, also in giving uh, sedation for these procedures. Many of these procedures require some sedation. And so it's good to know that your doctor is an anesthesiologist and can manage that. Very good. All right. This is a very complex subject, and there's a lot to it. And I know there are a lot of people in this country who suffer from chronic pain. So I'm sure they're very interested in hearing more on this subject. And we'll be back to continue our discussion with the doctor in just a moment. We have been watching the operations of an organization which is doing its part to keep America strong. And we've been learning from its leaders about what they're doing to help move our country forward. This organization represents companies across our great nation that embody the spirit, dedication, know-how, and can-do attitude which has made America the great nation it is today. And now let's present the Keeping America Strong Award. 
Now it's my honor to present this prestigious award to Dr. Mark Malone, the president of Advanced Pain Care in Austin, Texas, for the outstanding work that he and his fellow doctors are doing to help keep America strong and Americans healthy. Doctor, it's a pleasure to give this to you. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Doug. And I, this is indeed a great honor. And I, I really wish to express my thanks to the fine staff at Advanced Pain Care, the other doctors that I work with, and most of all to my wife who has kept with me through this great process and has really helped me stick it out. Thank you very much. You are very welcome indeed. Congratulations for earning the Keeping America Strong Award, which honors innovators and leaders like you who are the heartbeat of America. Our thanks to retired Rear Admiral Kevin Delaney for taking part in the presentation of the Keeping America Strong Award, the award that salutes small to middle-sized organizations who are helping to move America forward. If you'd like more information on the doctor's medical practice, you can find it on the web. His website address is www.austinpaindoctor.com. That's it for Heartbeat of America's special edition, Keeping America Strong. Now for a final word from William Shatner. I'm William Shatner. Thanks for watching.